fancy intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Welcome back, Star Trek Fleet Commanders, and today I want to take a look at the new IA building, the Independent Archives, and discuss what will be the best path for you in choices. As in, which way do you go? And I have to make this announcement first. Attention shoppers, you don't have to follow the same path as Rev. But I do want you to take from this video all the information you're going to need to make the selection of the five that are currently available with more that will be added to this. So for those that haven't followed the trend, one thing that Scopely has been trying to do with Star Trek Fleet Command is create something that they can work on for multiple months. Take, for example, the Mirror Universe. Now, it doesn't mean there's not going to be quote unquote new content coming out monthly, but it does mean that you're probably going to have a central theme around that. So with this video, I want to cover the basics of the initial five as also hopefully the methodology of what you should follow moving forward for you and your individual account. Now, what should be stated first is there is a free one in the very beginning, and that's the Botany Bay. Everybody can start working on the Botany Bay, as in there's no cost to work through the pillars. You simply have to meet the requirements. Like for me, for example, I do have a max Botany Bay on this account that you're looking at, but I have not reached Archives Level 16. Once I reach Archives Level 16, I can master the Botany Bay loop, meaning that I can pull this stuff every single day without any currency, without any cost. That means the loop will be done. What's the main thing I care about here? The transporter patterns I will be getting and the independent credits every day. It's just nice to have more, but doesn't mean it's an absurd or a lot, right? There, there's amounts to it, but that doesn't mean it's an, a lot of an amount. But let's talk about what you can get from the other ones. And again, this is going to come back to what is valuable for you. And I will try to keep this in terms of level discussion because this does start for level 16 players all the way up to the tippy top. So let's talk cost. How much does it cost to actually upgrade our various ships? And how much does it cost to upgrade our various masteries? So if you haven't maxed a ship yet, well, you've got to do that part, right? So upgrading the ship is separate from here, but they all have individual cost. As you can see here, the Botany Bay, it being free there. But if you look, they have the actual requirements. What if you're talking about ops range as also the pillar cost, which is that currency you get every day with this new loot. With the pillar cost, as you're bringing in more, you can then spend that to activate new pillars, which give various bonuses. Now, you saw on mine, if you're looking at my main account, that I've started working on the Voyager. I'll explain my logic as to why, but the Voyager is also the most expensive one currently available. As you can see, its total pillar cost is 10,000, whereas something, say, the Talios is cheaper. But here's the thing with the Talios, you need to be level 58 to max it. So even though the pillar cost for the Talios is only 4,000, there's not a lot of players out there who can actually say, hey, I can master this. I'm done. Oddly enough, the two most expensive options are the ones that are going to apply to a lot of players in terms of maxing where you have the Monovine and the Voyager. So my first simple logic I would apply to everybody is if you are below level 50, then you want to focus on the loops that you have either already completed or are currently working on completing. So let me pop this off the screen real quick and kind of go back to a basics of what the idea of the IA is. The IA is a mastery system, but first and foremost, it's supposed to be a system to help encourage players to complete loops faster and level up. So for example, on my lower level account, which I will show in this video here in a second, I'm going to be focusing on the Vidar as soon as they hit 25, meaning I'm going to go after the second one. But for the Modavine, I'm currently not touching it quite yet, nor have I done the Talios or the Vidar here. So why did I choose Voyager first? This is what goes back to my whole goofy announcement at the very beginning. You don't have to follow my exact methodology. I personally went after the Voyager because I wanted those rewards first. Why do I want those rewards? Well, if you scroll down, I want more of the artifact stuff. I love the artifact system. That's a personal thing. Not everybody has the same level of value to the artifact system that I do. But also, I'm looking for other things as well, like the commerce insignias allowing me to get more ship parts, things like that. That provides extra value for me because this is 300 Commerce Insignia a day once I've mastered it. And that means that I'll be getting ship parts every day in perpetuity. I mean, that's that's big for where the game is right now. In my opinion, it's big. As well as more canisters for me to go ahead and do that grind that we talk about doing with the Voyager to get more messages from scouts. So in that, I've now decided to go after these pillars, which means I'm getting these bonuses, whether it be the repair bonuses or the erosion relic and biotoxin increase or making the actual ability of the Voyager cheaper to operate. That's where I'm currently starting running. But there's a value mix that you have to find for yourself. And what is 
that value mix. It's a combination of the total cost of going through these pillars, but also what you're going to get from them. So again, just kind of like an easier, concise version with our spreadsheets. How long will it take? So days to IA level, it shows you how long it's going to take you to get to the level needed to say max these things out. And as you can see, well, it's going to take months if you're going through each individual loop. And I personally have chosen the one that takes the longest, which is why I said in the beginning of this video, you don't have to follow Rev's path. I'm personally saying that I find a lot of value in something for my play style, but I don't expect everybody else to follow. In fact, if you'd like to contribute to this video, let everybody else know what you do. I mean, a lot of people, Monavi, Talios, both of those, not wrong answers. The only reason I didn't go after the Talios is because I'm five levels away from its max. That means I'm five levels away from its mastery. And even though I think it is super, super valuable, eh, it's kind of meh. Whereas the Voyager is giving me that ship repair uh, cost efficiency, which I do like. And that is just something that you have to find for yourself. But in terms of overall value, if you're, if you're a player coming into this in a different position. So let me switch accounts real quick. So we're watching this screen. You're going to see everything change real quick. And that's going to be my level 24 account. So it's obviously working the Botany Bay. Yes, I'm actually going to upgrade the Botany Bay to do this. Why? Because think about it as a new player on this account, being able to get this every day will be huge for me as a player, especially expediting the process of getting things like transporter patterns. But I'm also going to do this first. So there's two ways I think immediately look at this. If you're a higher level player, you're trying to catch up with this mechanic as in bring this to the current level of mastery that you've already obtained. Or if you're a lower level player, you're probably looking at it more of, okay, how can this expedite the loop that I'm already doing? Because that is kind of an underrated part of this that the veterans admittedly are going to not see as clearly because you're not worried about it. You've already completed the loop. You're just trying to make it to where you get less clicks and that is completely valid. But for everybody else who is still in the 20s, 30s, etc., this is in, in theory and in practice, hopefully, because again, this is not six months later. This is as it's coming out. This is going to speed you up. So example, the nanoprobe increase, the increased damage, the Vidar component cost efficiency. That's what the CE stands for, FYI. That has value as you're working through your Vidar. And those of you who follow my channel and follow my live streams will see that on my lower level account on server 710. So as y'all go through and see that, you're going to see these continue to increase. And that is going to lead to this Vidar grind being quicker than it was for a lot of you players who were doing it originally. So again, the value really comes down to where you're at as a player, because it's clear that things like this have extreme value. The Talios has extreme value, but if you can't make it down the loop, how much value does it actually, you know, actively have here? Because everybody wants this, like this looks fantastic, right? We all want those directives. We want the officer shards, but again, you have to have maxed it out. You'd have to be level 58 at least to find the ultimate value, whereas a lot of players in the game, because now we finally moved into an age where there are more players in the 40s than in the 30s, right? That means many of you are getting closer to the Monavine and Voyager being maxed than you are the Talios, which means that maybe your decision needs to be really reliant on that. There's another chart that I kind of want to put up here just a second, and it is this one. This is how much you're getting every day. Remember, you want to make sure you're doing your pulls every day. There is a claim all button for that. That makes it a little bit easier if you've reached Syndicate 21. And this is going to determine how much you're getting in terms of schematics and how much you're getting in terms of bonuses and all those other good, good things. So if your level building is at 10, you see you're getting 1260. But as it goes up and up, or this is the cost, right? But if you look on the other side, what you're getting in your free shard, you see the 50, 75, 125 increasing. As you go up and up, meaning you're getting more and you're able to do more with that, as well as the cost efficiencies, which is a big theme to this entire feature. So very long-winded way in this video of saying, you have to find what works best for you, but I want you to see all the actual costs and actually see the, what I would say, the pertinent information. That being, how long is it going to take me and what benefits me the most right now? And I think what benefits most players the most is simply choosing to work on a loop that you have not maxed yet, but is within reach. For my main account, I'm doing the Voyager, but that doesn't mean the Monavine is a bad choice. I'll be honest, I'm tackling the Voyager because it's the biggest cost immediately. That's part of my logic. I know it's going to cost the most to max out, so I want to get that big one out the way. And then I'll work on the little ones. That doesn't make that methodology right by any means. It's just my choice because I want to quickly, if possible, get to a lot of these, finish that out. And then I'm going to switch to the Monavine. And surprisingly, many of you probably leave the Talios last 
simply because I'm not gonna be able to max it out. That doesn't mean these don't have value, simply meaning I'm going to put those values into other things. But there are good reasons to go after all of them. Again, going here, the non-specific loop bonuses, I think, are pretty neato, where the monoving giving you that PvP apex barrier, which can be big for arenas and stuff like that if you're doing the upgrades. The non-specifics can be key there. So I'm very curious to see what all of you think in the comment section as always it is really good to see the community coming together to give their thoughts their ideas to all the mechanics that star triple command is working with i do like this obviously time gates and things can be annoying but hopefully this video helps you see what might work for you with all the information that we have gathered and hopefully my decision oh you either agree with or disagree with it but if nothing else it shows you hey these are the paths that rev's taking and why and either i agree with it or disagree with it y'all let me know down below i'm good with either bit of it Thumbs up if you haven't already. Like the video. Subscribe. Appreciate y'all as always. Live long and plunder. Stay safe out there. Deuces. Appreciate all of our nerds. I actually have to literally finishing up editing this video. I've actually got to go do a spreadsheet for Jules. So I'm going to be right back in the numbers if y'all need me. Live long and plunder. See you on the next one. And uh, let me know what you're doing with your IA building. Like I said, I'm starting Voyager. A lot of you starting Monavine. No wrong answers, but very curious to see where y'all are going. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.